Hello and welcome back to my Unreal Engine Basics for Beginners tutorial series. If you want to check out the full playlist, do not hesitate to check out the description. And if you want to get videos ahead, make sure to check out my Patreon, where you will be able to access the videos as soon as they're finished. So today we are going to be checking out delays and re-triggerable delays, which are nodes that you can use in Blueprint Actors or Character Blueprints. And these nodes actually help you control flow of your code. So we are actually going to take a look at how to do those and what they are used for and the difference between them. And when I was a beginner, it was very hard for me to tell the difference between them. So yeah, we're just going to go through all of it and I'm going to guide you through the entire thing. So to start, we are going to be opening the third person character, which is the character blueprint that we are like, this character blueprint is the default that comes with this project. If you have chosen the third person project, this should be in it. So yeah, you just want to open the character blueprint and go to event graph. And in case you do not know it's in the third person bp folder blueprints it's over here third person character and we still haven't looked at character blueprints yet but i just want to be quick and uh, tell you that you can just access like several buttons and these inputs are things that can do like pressing a button can run a line of code that's all you need to know for now uh, the next part is definitely going to be the character blueprint, so just wait for that. Anyway, you want to right click in the event graph and type input E. We're going to go with the E button. So this should bring you a button. And when you press it, we want to do something. So when we press this button, we are going to do a delay. And this delay is going to be three seconds. And yeah, this node, basically, it's a normal delay. This delay will wait three seconds. It will start a timer from three seconds and it will go all the way to zero. And then what we want to do is we want to print string. So print string, I already showed you this node before. It just prints a text or anything, basically any string variable into your game. And basically it's only for development. So yeah, keep that in mind. And we are just going to type hello. Hello is fine. And now if you compile and play your game and then press the E button, you can see that if we wait three seconds, it says hello at the upper right corner. So I want to show you how this code actually runs. So maybe we can just bring this up over here and press play. Yeah, it should simulate. And if it doesn't simulate, you can just go press this one for debug and choose the instance of that character. So now if you press the E button, you can see that the delay happens and then it counts down. Then the print string happens. And no matter how many times you press E, the delay will run at the pace of the original time that it started. So you can see that even if you are pressing, it will not really reset the delay until it is finished and you press again. So this delay, it doesn't stop until it ends and you can you cannot really go through it again unless it's finished, which is great. It's very useful. But the other one we want to take a look at is the re-triggerable delay. And basically, let's make this also three seconds and connect it instead of this one. There we go. So the retriggerable delay is basically the same thing. It's a delay, but this one, even if you are like pressing over and over, it doesn't really wait for it to end for it to happen again. The retriggerable delay is going to be like, it's going to happen even if you like, if it's not finished, it will actually reset the delay. So if we hit play and give it a try, you can see that it waits, same thing, if you press it only once, and it says hello. And you can see the countdown. So yeah, it's fine. But if you actually keep pressing it, it will keep resetting the countdown if it's not finished. So this is what retriggerable delay means. And you might be wondering, like, how is this ever useful? Well, it will be very, very useful when you are building more complex stuff, even some simple stuff. Having retriggerable delays is definitely going to help you. So as you can see, we are now 
delaying the uh, way like we are delaying the print string by not letting the countdown reach zero and this is actually useful for games with timers so if a game has a timer where if the delay ends um you just uh like for example it just game over if the delay ends or if the timer ends and maybe you have item pickups that will actually trigger the retriggerable delay so anyway um that was delays versus retriggerable delays in a nutshell this way you know you can really control your code with them and they basically really really help you make things smoother building a game without delays for me it's currently impossible so yeah <laughs> keep that in mind anyway i really hope you guys enjoyed the video do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel and if you want to get more content and faster content you can definitely check out my patreon where i just post these videos ahead and basically as soon as they're finished i just post them there so guys i will see you in the next video where we are going to be taking a look at character blueprints i'll see you next time take care have a great day and bye